So T6, this is like episode four. So if you haven't seen, or you've just come in at this episode, it's probably worth you watching the others because this is the very end. It's about to go home. I'm in a bit of a rush. We got to, so we've got to do this in sort of one take because it's about to be collected and I completely forgot to shoot the end of it. So um, let's take a look around it. It's quite a big job, this, and it sounds wicked. Owner of this, James, likes things to be, we call it party mode. He, he just likes things to be loud. He likes them to be quite bold and fun to listen to. He's not one for the sort of plinky plonky SQ-iness of things. He likes them to be sort of interactive and fun to listen to and energetic. So this one focuses on sort of tonality and a bit more output than our usual system. So let's run through it and we can see the finished product. So starting from the back, eight Isatar 1200s, all right, in individual boxes. So each of these boxes can be undone. There's um, fixings on the back, so you sort of spin them off, and then you can take them out. They're around 80 kilos each, so they're a two-man lift, but doable, and you can take them all out, and everything just looks OEM. Uh, when, when they're out, so carpet inside the gaps. These are all fully custom made so that it can kind of flow on with the sub box. In the top there, we've got different sort of fixings for him. So we can plug in USB A, C, um, 12 volt sockets and stuff like that and see what sort of voltage he's getting from the secondary battery that runs the system. Along the sides, as you can see, trim the, with the same ampersand, so all of this the whole thing is lined with an anthracite carpet. And then we've got the audio control LC1.1500, which is for each sub box. So one for that one, one for that one. Same on this side, this one runs the left one. And then we've got uh, four LC4.800s, okay? Uh, they're running a four-way active front end, and they are left and right separated, so. That's there. And then we've got a rear soundbar speaker down there, which plays the rear passengers. Whilst there is a, um, an argument for sort of rear quarter mounted speakers, in terms of sound, no one's ever gonna get a, you know, a decent sound from that when it's pointing right at the back of your head when you're a rear passenger. So the, this box is angled and it's angled up towards the rear passengers and it plays up to these lucky guys who can sit in this bench. So yeah, that's kind of the back end. Of course, everything's fully sounded and we've had every panel out. All of these are removable, um, so you can service the amps. When I say service, I don't mean pull them apart and service them like you would a car. I mean, you can get to it, you can muck around with gains, you can muck around with any settings on the amps, so it makes them a serviceable part in the middle of a working day, so you're gonna hear noises like that. Up front, we've got the lower mid base build. This is in a vented baffle, which is restricted. So the drive unit has its, has its airspace restricted, but not sealed, okay? Which tunes that slightly lower than you would usually do. Sealed kick build, right? On axis. That gives us 125 to around 250. It's quite a narrow band. And then we've got the Isatar mid-range and tweeter in the pillars. Now these are off axis and you're sat pretty much at sort of 80 degrees from them. So they have to have a decent off axis response. But like I said, in this build, we're more on sort of tonality and output. We're not necessarily that interested in staging in here because the client isn't necessarily interested in that. He likes it to have a club-like sound, you know? So. Sound doesn't uh, have an issue getting all over you in this van, so yeah. Um, yeah, and of course they've been trimmed uh, and everything cream, you can see that's been fabricated has been trimmed with the, uh, to match the OEM fabrics and colors in the car. But the RC mounted here, we did have it mounted uh, on the screen, but like I say, horses for courses, James wanted it mounted down lower, he doesn't like it up on the screen. We've got the Sony ES9500, still not available in the UK. All right, we've had this in here now for 
uh, a good six months and uh, still Sony pull your finger out with that because we get a lot of requests for this unit um, yeah and that's about it so you know in terms of uh, in terms of product we've got all the audio control amplifiers we've got the bit one HD doing processing there's 11 channels running in here so a four-way active front end bass and the rears the rears are passive so in that sort of sound bar it's passive crossovers inside the box um, and that's on an umbilical as well so it can be taken out of the van if you wanted to you could just put it down by the side door and let it play out of the van if you like if you're at a show or a beach or whatever um, yeah that covers it seems like a really short video for such a massive job but there are three or four other episodes going into detail on what we've done in this van so check them out like I say if you've landed on this one, you've landed on the last in a series of sort of uh, about this van. Anyway, T6 owners, T5 owners, van owners, car owners, lorry owners, get in touch. All right. I'm Carl. This is Studio in Car. Likes and subscribes are always welcome. All right. Take it easy.